Jong, ik denk ik is Amerika toe baie vinnig, omdat ik jong en dom was. <laughs> um, nee, ik heb een paar films gemaakt, ik heb vier films gemaakt in Zuid-Afrika. Ik heb twee booty films en um, uh, uh, Kring in een bos. En um, toe vraag Barney Simon van die Mark Theater voor mij of ik um, een verhoogstuk daar wil doen. A play called Born in the RSA, uh, which they did at the Market Theater, which I was not in. But uh, we did that in the States and we toured for eight months. And it was very good for me, because it was, while we were in San Francisco with the first time, was Mr. Mandela there. There was something like 89,000 people to see him in the stadium in uh, San Francisco. And here we are doing this little South African play about, about what went down here. So a lot of people came to see the play and saw me. Um, and um, I got an agent. I got an American agent by, uh, by doing the play that asked to represent me. And I said, sure, you can go for it. But I think I'm going to go South Africa too, because I'm a booty from the border too, and I have a big cup, and I know that I can do things in South Africa. But um, <laughs> to call the agent and say, hey, I'm going to audition for you. And um, um, I went and did the audition, and it uh, turned out to be a movie called Hard Target which was sort of a B generic action movie. But what made that a big break for me is that the director was a Chinese uh, a guy at the time, uh, a Chinese director who was the preeminent action director in the world, a guy called John Woo. He'd done a bunch of fantastic uh, uh, films and Hollywood had asked him to come do his first movie there. Anyway, they cast me in this thing and um, I went and did that and um, um, like I said, it was, a, it was a great break because all of Hollywood went to go and see the movie to see John's work and to see Le Meirach and say, Wees die bliksem, uh, hierom vir iets anders. Um, so dit was baie goed vir my. And I sell it twee jaar nadat ek die hard target gedoen het, um, to kry ek auditie in New York vir a verhoogstuk. Hulle was baie hash hash and they didn't want to say who's doing it or what it's about. They just said, we've got an audition for you. You know, we know you want to do theater. You come from the theater, uh, but there's this play. We can't tell you what it is. You just have to go and then they'll give you the pages and you'll go on stage and you'll read it. And then they you say, yeah, or no. So, all right, let us go. And got to New York, went down Broadway, Circle in the Square. And, you know, it's like in the movies. It's like a black theater and you're in the wings. And they say, okay, number 63, or what the call your number is, come, come, come and do your thing. And I, I went out and, and I, I looked at the lines and I knew it was uh, Oscar Wilde Salome at this point, and it was the part of John the Baptist, um, or Yokanan, and he play. Anyway, um, I read, and then uh, they said, okay, go wait here. And somebody else came, they said, they want you to come back and, and, and read a second time, like right now. So I went back and read a second time, and then you sort of seen men say, scuttle down, and sit in my car and prat, and then douche. And then the house lights came on, and um, um, I saw this guy walking forward, and it was the actor Al Pacino. And they say, uh, hi. I'm Al Pacino, you did a great reading. Um, I'd love for you to do this play with us. And yeah, I just, you know, fuck, this is well, you'll forlore your brains of the stadium. All is Mark Sir. But but that was, it's a long story, but I'm telling you the story, what he, Al Pacino, had not play gedoen in, in New York for it's so 16 or 17 years. He did American Buffalo when he was a young actor. Then he, you know, went and did all these movies and, and so this was a, um, Salome was a play he's always wanted to do and, and he was doing it. So it was another big break, want, want elke aand, as jy uit die dressing room uitkom, dan staan die mense daar en wacht om el te sien. And this, you know, it's, it's, it is Francis Ford Coppola and it is hierdie in and it is daar in, jy weet. So, so that was another big break because they all came to see Al, but I'm in the play and I've got a good part, so they saw me and... En dis my hoe die ding begin het, ja. Ek moet sê, ek het nooit enigszins enige um, uh, politieke uh, sin of enige raksjens gevoel oor die feit dat ek een wit Suid-Afrikaner is, 
uh, wat werk in Amerika nie. En ek praat nou van vroeger negentigs. Um, allemaal was geïnteresseerd oor wat hier gebeur het. En misschien omdat ik in die milieu van die kunste was, um, maybe they cut me some slack, I don't know. But um, I never got like, you know, you're a white South African, you're a bad dude, you know, get the fuck out. I never got that anywhere. So, ek uh, um, sê altyd, God is a vrou en sy is lief vir my, because I, you know, I've always been lucky that way. Ek moet sê, die Suid-Afrikaanse accent, of die Afrikaanse, Suid-Afrikaanse accent, of die Engelse, Suid-Afrikaanse accent, is definitief een bate vir, uh, vir uh, ons Suid-Afrikaanse acteers oor see, acteers oor see, vooral, vooral in Amerika. Hulle dink ons accent is baie mooi. Um, if you speak English with this accent in America, whether you're in a bar or somewhere, somebody is going to tell you, wow, you have a really beautiful accent. En, um, en het het al paar keer gebeur dat ek in films gecast is, vooral soos Hard Target, wat hulle het recht het vir jou sê, sê, listen, you know, you, you look great, and you're going to be a good bad guy, but when you speak, it sounds so beautiful, can't you make it like a bit more, you know, can't you do something with it? And then of course, you, you know, you're I do Alberton style where I go, yeah, I can talk like this, you know, I can, I can sound like an oak from Brakpan and how's that work for you? And they go, oh, that's perfect. That accent is perfect. That is really lacquer. So, yeah, so you, and of course, all my friends at home, when they go and see the movie, they're like, who come doing your cock accent? <laughs> What's your story? I mean, niemand praat, jy praat nooit so, nie, sê nie, maar die Amerikaners soek it, you know, they, they're writing the checks and they live a act with so accent doing so. Um, uh, maar ja, hulle dink ons natuurlijk accent, een natuurlijke accent is baie mooi. Selfs met die breaks wat ek gehad het, en dat mense my vroeg raak gesien het, uh, gaan jy nou auditie toe? Jy, jy krij jy auditie, nou is het anders, is natuurlijk alles self type op jou phone, en jy stuur die ding weg. Maar in die dag sê hulle vir jou, gaan na die plek toe, en wees daar 10 uur of 9 uur, of wat ook al, en dan gaan jy so toe, en dan sê 300 ouders. En twee van hulle lyk precies soos jy. En jy staan daar en jy dink, ok, hoekom gaan ek nou hierdie job kry en nie die ou, of die ou, wat soos ek lyk, never mind die ander bloody 200 en, en uh, 298 guys, you know, so, um, dit was, dit, dit is altyd a challenge, that's always a challenge, en, um, en die feit dat ek vroeg besef het, because I play bad guys and I had success playing bad guys in Hollywood early, het ek vroeg besef, ek gaan nooit, um, ek gaan nie die hoofrol speel, ek gaan nie die, die Amerikaanse hoofrol speel, en al doel nie ook een Amerikaanse accent, hulle wil hee, jy moet die ding doen wat jy laas keer gedoen het, wat een sukses was, en, um, and quite rightly so, hulle het baie Amerikaners wat hulle kan hierom, Amerikaners te speel. Ek het nou een paar keer goed gedoen in Amerika met die Amerikaanse accent, maar ja, um, um, yeah, they just, you know, hulle, hulle wil hee, ek moet hulle wil hee, ek moet talk like this, en mense van een gebouw afgooi. So, this is a challenge, ja. Yeah. Ek so sê, die, die ginsteling regisseers wat ek mee gewerk het, was uh, Ridley Scott, in uh, 1492 saam met Gerard Jep Depardieu, wat ook een amazing experience was om saam met hom te werk. Hy um, is een mal Fransman. Uh, en dan natuurlijk John Woo van Hard Target, van die, van die, want ek hou persoonlijk van actiefilms, is soos een ballet. En John uh, het my vertel dat, uh, toe hy begin films maak het, en dat sy ginsteling films is Amerikaanse musicals. En you know, whether it's singing in the rain or whatever, he loves balletic movies that have lots of dancing, you know, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers and all those great American musicals. And he marks a action movie so it's musicals, you know, and some plaas van, plaas van a glas champagne het like gun in die hand, diepe van ding. En vir alles sê, sê vroeger Chinese films kyk, uh, Bullet in the Head, and amazing, they're just so beautiful and visual. So dis twee van my ginstel in, um, um, acteurs, ach, regisseurs, ja, en Ridley ook op 49.2, he's just great, Ridley Scott, ja, yeah, yes, ja, dit was die eerste groot les, was die skaal van die films, toe ek daar kom, jy weet, jy kom daar, en hy is 200 ouwens in die crew, en hy is drie camera's, ek het nog nooit drie camera's op een stel gesien, en skielik sê hulle vir jou, hi, welcome, 
You're going to come through this window and you're going to shoot this guy and you're going to run out that door and that's the wide shot back there. And there's a camera there and this one's close on you here. Okay, you ready? Action! Go! I'm like, what the fuck? I've never seen three cameras. So this was a, this was a unpassing. But they do it also with the cameras. You do that one or two takes, as three cameras, and you in and out, and you're clear. You know. But it is, it is all on a big grander scale. It is a really good fact to be used to raak that on. But it's also better to be smaller grander to do. You know, it's it's not always on a big scale. And especially on action films, you have the Het jy die geld nodig in die skaal, maar as jy iets kleiners wil doen, soos die Grieko stad ding wat ek gedoen het, of speciaal teruggekom het om te doen, uh, want ek was gatvol vir die groot skaal, goed, um, dan is het lekker, dan sal jy een camera en 10 cent en kom ons maak een film. <laughs>